Good morning, St. Matthew. Can you believe it? Here we are now. School is starting. It's already August. And at this time, I like to give what I call my next installment. This will be part three of my Heart to Heart homiletic series. In case some of you aren't aware, back in May, I found myself in the emergency room of East Georgia Regional with a heart rate of over 209 beats per minute. Following, I was then told that my lifestyle had to change. So in my first Heart to Heart homily, I shared with you all the things that I had to learn that attributed for me to allow myself to have that interior freedom, self-awareness, self-acceptance, and self-gift. Thus, when it came to my own heart, I became aware of what was causing my heart to race. I then had to accept it, or I could choose to ignore it or deny it, and then make the sacrifices and changes necessary so that I can continue to be a gift of service to others. I shared at that time for you and I, for, every, for everyone, when it comes to our spiritual lives, it is good to remember that are you aware of what causes you to sin? Do you accept it or do you deny it or try to make excuses? So that once you're aware of what's going on in your own spiritual life, you can then freely give it over to the Lord so that you can be entirely free to be able to share the good news with others. Or if we want to put it into context with today's second reading, St. Paul wants us to be interiorly free and be aware of putting away the old self so that we could put on the new self that we are created in God's way, in righteousness and in truth. I want to share that this past Wednesday, I had my follow-up cardiologist visit. And it was then that we discovered that out of a, an abundance of caution, that I should have a CT scan completed to understand what makes my heart and how the blood flows differently from the way everybody else is wired. So next Thursday, I'll go to OPI, and then I'll take things from there. But likewise, as your spiritual father, today, I figured, you know, why don't we begin our own spiritual CT scan of our church? First, let me share what you already know and what we already celebrate. St. Matthew is a very special place here in Statesboro, and we have become an enriching and thriving parish now with a growing Spanish-speaking population, a growing collegiate population, each group its own culture, but sharing in the same bread of life. I'm aware that more people are now hungry to learn more about Jesus Christ, and some of you are eager to find ways to serve. So why this spiritual CT scan? Well, you know that as we continue to grow, and as this parish has had transitions, it's good to be aware of things that can happen along the way in order to move forward. As I shared last week, having come back from the Eucharistic Revival Congress in Indianapolis, I wrote down some prayer intentions for the Carmelite nuns to take to perpetual adoration. And one of those prayer intentions was for the healing of any wounds, both past or present, that may be here at our parish of St. Matthew. And I want you to know, the Lord has already begun to address and answer this prayer request. I've received a few emails and some people that want to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation. So to be aware of what some wounds might possibly be and how we make sure these wounds don't cause any more pain. So I just want you to know right now, St. Matthew, as we continue to have much to celebrate that makes us special, I want to make you aware that regardless of where you are spiritually, you have my attention. You always have, and you always will. I want you to know that I am aware. But using that formula of interior freedom, there is awareness, acceptance, and then the self-gift. I'm aware that there could be some people in the pews now that are hurting. And what I just asked you to do during this time of our spiritual CT scan, that if you are hurting, to please make me aware of what these wounds are. How 
how is it that you have been hurt? Were you hurt by the Catholic Church? Were you hurt by somebody here? Were you hurt by me? Is it something else? The more I can become aware of any specific wounds during this time of our spiritual CT scan, the more that I can take them to the Lord as you can too. And together, we can accept what these wounds are and give them over together to our divine physician to help us begin that healing process, to ablate what should not be there, to help reduce anything that's causing a blockage so that the lifeblood of our parish can continue to operate and thrive as it should and has always been. And much like my body, things might not be where they should be, but that doesn't mean that we can't work around or continue to make great things happen together, that we can seek counsel with our Lord and make sure things are at least functioning the way they should. Again, we are a great, unique parish family. There are still things great to celebrate in the borough, but I just ask that if any wounds are present, let's not hide them, let's heal them. So when I first came to the parish, I asked that you please address me as Father Adams. However, my first name translated from the Greek means healer. So I want you to know beginning today and moving forward, if you are experiencing any hurt right now, please be aware that you have my permission and you may now, if you should choose, you may address me as Father Jason. Now, when preparing to come up today, as we go to receive our Lord, body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Eucharist, I want you to ask yourself this question that we can take to our Lord. What old ways do I have to put away so that I might find new life in Christ? Ask yourself, what old ways might need to be put away so that you and I together can have a new life in Christ? Know that in the Eucharist, the Lord gives us the food that we need to sustain us in our journey. Whether it was from back when Moses was trying to lead the people to the promised land, or the Lord is trying to lead us now to heaven itself. Now, last week, I also mentioned that we are now embarking on the final year of the Eucharistic revival, where we are now told to be on mission. And there is a new initiative called the Walk With One. Is there somebody in our family, in our parish, or in the community that you could walk one-on-one -on -one with? For example, do you know someone that has left this church? Do you know someone who is a seeker of a different faith tradition or maybe of no faith tradition at all? So to help you try to accompany perhaps one person this year to aid you in this journey and to also make sure that everyone here today has an opportunity to encounter our Lord in the Eucharist. I have made some changes to, after consultation to our liturgical schedule to help better accommodate everyone having more opportunities to have an encounter with Christ. And much like I have to have a cardiologist appointment follow up in a few months, know that after a few months, I will can continue to consult and see if any other changes might need to be made in our liturgical schedule. Remember that the heart of the Mass is the Eucharist. I just hope that our new prayer schedule allows you to experience our Lord now with opportunities to come to Mass Monday and Tuesday at 7 a.m. before you go to work, to have more opportunities during the week for adoration of the Eucharistic Lord. And with this new schema, there is now an additional day and some additional times to encounter the Lord in the Sacrament of Reconciliation. Now, St. Matthew, last night, we saw a lot of rain and there is a tropical storm right now coming this way. But I want you to know that no matter what's happening with the storm right now, know that Jesus right now is in the boat with you all. Jesus is in the boat with you. So if right now in your spiritual life, you feel that the storm is raging and Jesus is just sleeping in the boat, like an old Irish priest once said, give him a pillow. I mean, our Lord's got this. Even if the waves and storms are crashing around us, our Lord showed us a few weeks ago in that reading that he can calm the storm and calm any sea. And I'd also like for you to recall, if you like to listen to Christian music, the lyrics to the song by Casting Crown, Just Be Held. The chorus goes, your world is not falling apart, it's falling into place. 
Stop holding on. I am on the throne and just be held. Just be held. Come to me and find your rest in the arms of a God who won't let go. St. Matthew, Jesus has us. He always has and he always will. Allow yourself to be vulnerable with him and to be led by him. Take everything to our Lord. And from the heart, our Lord speaks to our needs and he wants us to be whole. And my prayer for you beginning today is that when you leave this mass, may anybody that encounters you on the way out realize, wow, there is someone who knows that Christ is alive. No one walks alone and all are welcome. Amen.